Fireside Podcast with Jordan and Abby. Um, thanks for joining us. We're going to jump in. Um, why don't we start with coffee? What are you drinking today? Well, I am drinking an iced chai because I've already had several coffees this morning. I thought I'd change it up. Mm. But you're drinking coffee. I you're am. drinking one of the new drinks, our new summer drinks. I am. The Sunrise. The Citrus Sunrise. Citrus Sunrise. There we go. <laughs> It helps when you have the barista across the tables from you. Okay, uh, but the question, Jordan, is is what pastry do you eat with your coffee? Do you have a go-to? Mm. So being a big guy my whole life, people always were like, dude, have the coffee, lay off the pastry, or have the pastry, lay off the coffee. Like, Pick one. So I always went with coffee. So when I think of pastries that would go with coffee, I don't often think of anything um i <laughs> i usually think of like oh well people usually have donuts i don't like self-identify i put it on other people like oh people usually have donuts with coffee or scones with coffee um i have many stories i could tell about pastries with coffee um but i would say like a maple bar is always gold with any coffee hot coffee iced coffee what about you i don't know i'm not a huge donut fan i mm. What do I normally have? I I like a, I like a scone. I I don't know. I don't really have anything in mind. I what I really like actually is like anything fun from Trader Joe's. So their like cookie section, whatever is like new and fun at Trader Joe's, that's what I like with my coffee. Oh, like those um what were they? <coughs> lemonade oh, cookies, yeah. strawberry those, lemonade cookies. Yes, those are really good. Those. In fact, I picked some new ones up the other day for next week when we're in the office and have coffee. What are I they? I found their shortbread, strawberry shortcake cookie. That looks really good. And then I grabbed the maple cookies because you just can't go wrong with the no. Trader Joe's maple co- maple leaf cookies. I don't think I've had one of those. So. Oh, so good. Trader Joe's is not as popular down where I was living before I moved here. So, like, yeah, we had, like, Safeway, Fred Meyers were, like, the big go-tos. You'd have a couple mom-and-pop shops. Mm-hmm. But uh, other than that, like Costco, but like Trader Joe's was one that hadn't moved in much yet. And there wasn't a Whole Food, I think. Whole Foods within like 15, 20 miles or maybe 50 miles. And then the closest Walmart was like five towns away. Like, Whoa. forget about it. So, yeah, we it was like Safeway or Fred Meyer's house or Albertson's. Which was a big one. I don't even know. I don't think I've seen an Albertson since I've been up here. No. I, well, we have used you, to have one. I'll say, have you heard we of Albertson's? To, yes, I've heard of Albertson's. Okay. We used to have one here, but we don't anymore. No, the Albertson's, the only Albertson's that I go to is in Walla Walla, Washington, where my aunt and uncle live. Oh. They have an Albertson's. That's quite a ways from here. It's a so. long ways. That's more than a couple drive. towns away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure there's one closer. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past anybody to leave them out. Um, all right. We have been going through a bunch of new topics. Every week's been a new topic in our sermon series. Mm -hmm. So it's been the just once series. We're just wrapping that up. Um, we had a guest speaker, Jim George came in. He was, he's a big time author. He and his wife have written tons of books, um, sold millions of copies, but like he said something that was so cool when he was here and it's just a testament to Pastor Lincoln was like, it was a sermon series that like not a lot of people take the time to like, he had never heard of, and I had never heard of it. Um, like people haven't taken the time to like notice the difference. Like you always study pieces of the gospels, but Mm -hmm. like looking at the gospels as a whole, it was a really cool, like, Oh, there are slight differences in the gospels. Like, well, let's attack those differences and like see why they were important and what they meant. And like, I don't know. I just really appreciated that about this sermon series. Um, I just like, that was a really cool, um, opportunity, uh, to dive in. I think we had seven weeks, right? Yeah. I think a little bit more with some of the guest speakers, but it is, it has been so interesting. The Just One series, the whole concept is looking at stories that are unique to each gospel. And, and it is amazing because 
all the gospels are written by different people, different personalities. They had different jobs. And so they tell the stories in a different way, or they focus on some stories that the others don't. And it is interesting. It's interesting to look at Luke and how he writes as a doctor and how he adds so much detail to his gospel versus John who, you know, he likes the bullet points or, you know, it, it's so interesting to see the differences and see the different stories. So that's been such a fun series. Um, in fact, Jordan, what has been your favorite um, just one story to, to look at? Mm. Oh, they were so good. Um, I think Jesus uh, turning water into wine is such a, we talked about that one. I think that was in Jesus Goes to a Wedding, I think was the sermon mm-hmm. title. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought that was really cool, like the way, Jesus had begun to kind of separate himself for ministry, and we got to kind of see the veil of where, like, Jesus knows what he's there to do. He knows what he's supposed to do, but he's putting some distance between him and everybody else in the sense of, like, no, it's not my time yet. Like, Jesus is almost, like, not insecure about it, but he's, like, um, just hesitant to do the miracle, which for him is, like, nothing. And the step of faith that his mom takes and goes, like, listen, just do what he says. And that was like a key point that we hit Mm -hmm. was that his mom, uh, Mary, just like looks to the servants and goes like, I don't care what he is like telling me he's not going to do. Like just whatever he says to do, when he says to do it, just go do it. And so, you know, fill up the jars, they fill them up. And then all of a sudden they are serving the best wine and it's, it's, you know, way better than the stuff that they originally thought was the best wine. And, um, you know, that relationship to just like, if you open your Bible and you read, what are called, you know, the red words, or if your Bible doesn't have red words, what Jesus is saying. And you can, you can live your life in such a way that's just so fulfilling. It's better than anything that you can imagine for yourself. We all create this storyline of our lives. Like, here's how this is going to go. And once I have kids, here's how this is going to go. And the kids are going to, I'm going to raise them this way. And I'm going to retire at this age. And God's like, no, like just follow Jesus. Like his word is alive and living. Every time I open it, it's different. Not in the sense of the words are different, but like the spirit convicts me differently or Jesus moves differently. And in this passage specifically, it was like a reflection of like, just do what Jesus says. Like stop worrying about the end goal. Stop worrying about the minutia of these little details. It's like, just do what Jesus says. And then like all of a sudden there's like miracles happening. And I've seen miracles in my life just by being faithful. Like God has like taken care of my family in really tough times or like us coming to Paulsbo, Washington, which no offense, isn't a big place. Like it's not very well known. This is no offense to those listening from Paulsbo Community Church or Paulsbo, the area or anybody that's in a small town in the Olympic Peninsula. But like it's the top left corner of the United States, like the middle of geographical nowhere like and so like God brought us here and it's been fulfilling God has answered prayer after prayer he's um, he's fulfilled all of his promises in our lives continually taking care of us providing for us and so like as I look back through that lens of like just follow Jesus just follow Jesus just do what Jesus says like as we the more my wife Hannah and I have done that and just been present with him. Like our life, we've just really seen it begin to take this great path where God's just really at the center of it and super, we're super blessed by him. Um, and that's been super amazing. Yeah, it has. It's amazing to see God, Jesus responds to people's demonstrations of faith and over and over again in the just one series, we've been seeing different people approach Jesus and, they come to him in faith. And because of that, amazing things happen in their life. You know, we think of the blind man who came and was healed by Jesus. We think of the lepers who came and they wanted to be healed and he healed them. And just um, over and over again, we see God responds to those who are faithful to him and trust him. And that's such an amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of the gospels as a whole, which gospel, if if I were to say, hey, here's so-and-so, they're new to church, like which gospel should they read? What would be your response? Uh, I don't know. I Or what makes it well, tricky? Well, I like to start with number one. So Matthew, I start at the beginning and just, you know, go. Um, mm-hmm. I've always heard John is like the best one to start with, but I, I, I don't know. I like the storytelling. I like to, s- John doesn't do a ton of storytelling. He's very deep and he he's very philosophical in his book, but, um, I think like Matthew or Mark, like you get 
the whole story. Like you see Jesus from from zero to when he dies on the cross and when he rises again. And mm-hmm. I, I think that's really cool. So I'd say I'd start with maybe Matthew. Cool. It, it, it talks about everything. Whereas John, he like he hits really good stuff, but he doesn't hit everything yeah. in the life of Jesus. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. What about you? So I did not have a good answer to this question at all. For the longest time, I'd be like, oh, I would just throw out John. I'd be like, oh, yeah, read John. Like, Because everybody says good. to read John. Yeah. And I, and uh, Nathan Paygard and I have been studying the Bible uh, together because I've just needed a man in my life who's just like, hey, let's read the word. And he goes, read Mark. And I was like, why Mark? And he goes, it's short and to the point. Like Mark doesn't mince his words. He there's not drag on stories. Like, and as I was reading through the book of Mark, in like one chapter of Mark, there was like four stories, and I was like, whoa, okay. So if you want like a quick hit, if you have ADHD like me and you can't focus on something for more than thirty seconds at a time, Mark is the place to go because it gives you a great scope of Jesus's life and ministry. And it helps you understand the timeline in a compact way where there's not too many details, but like you're still getting the full view. So it'd be like, you know, like a 720 image of like a full 4K movie. Like you get the idea. It's not super pretty. It's not super detailed, but like you get you get what's there. And for me, it's been really helpful because then I can go, oh, that's like Mark chapter like five. And I'm like, oh, where's that in Matthew? Like seven or eight. Cool. And I like it helps me kind of Mm cross-reference when I'm kind of looking for things. Or I look in Mark and I'm like, oh, it's not in Mark where I thought it would be. That means it's somewhere else and it's always a little bit later than it would be in Mark. But still, that's my go-to for people and having a relationship with them if I know they're like me and their brain can't focus for more than a few seconds, like that's definitely the one I give them. Um mostly just for that. Speaking of just one series, sermon art was fantastic. Thank you. So you designed that art. So I want to know some of the inspiration for the art, like how you, that, that creative process that you went through and kind of how you got to where you got to. Yeah. So um, let me think. Well, Pastor Lincoln said that he wanted it to look like a newspaper. Uh, the concept of just once was like newsflash, you know, you wanted big bold letters, you know, in your face. And so that was kind of my jumping off point. And we kept it pretty simple. Um, only three colors, black and white and red, um, red, because we're talking about the gospel message. We're talking about words of Jesus and stuff like that. So red is a pretty significant color throughout the Bible. I use that a lot in my designs, especially when we're in the new New Testament and we're studying the life of Jesus. Um, so that's where that came from. And then, uh, I always love to include icons because that for as a graphic designer, or as a somebody who's artistic, I love icons because it's easy to remember mm-hmm. and it's very simple design. And so we threw some icons in there. I've got an icon from uh, a story we actually didn't cover in the Just One series. Um, there's a fish with a couple of coins from the time when Peter uh, needed to pay taxes and Jesus was like, well, go fishing. And uh, he caught a fish and pulled two coins out of the fish's mouth. Uh, which is a cool story, but we didn't we didn't have time to cover that one. So <laughs> that icon's in there, and then um, oh, there's a f- an icon of so- a loaf of bread and uh, a cup of wine. Actually, maybe that one didn't make it in. A reference to all of the feasting that happens <laughs> throughout some of those stories, and um, uh, we also ha- also have a tomb, which was a reference to Lazarus being raised from the dead, which we did talk about in one of our uh, sermon series. So that's cool. Um, yeah. So that's kind of where the design came from. Kept it pretty simple. Yeah. Sweet. So you talked about one of the just once is just once topics that we didn't cover. (laughs) Do you have a favorite one of those that we didn't cover? A favorite that we didn't just cover? Just once that we didn't cover. Well, I was really excited for the fish one. I don't I don't know why. <laughs> just Maybe because it just works so well <laughs> on the artwork. So I wanted I, to see that one, and we didn't get yeah. to it. So when we come back around, because there's so many stories that we didn't cover in this Just Once passage, That's true. I think that means that we could have a Just Once round two later yeah. on. Sure. And we'll post some more of those stories. 
um, there's there's a lot to pick from. And I, I read through a list when I was first designing the artwork of mm. all of the different passages that are only in that gospel or specific gospels. And I, of course, now can't remember any of them except for the fish one because That's I drew okay. it. Yeah, well... <laughs> It's committed to memory. Yes, it is. Write it down, draw it into a picture. I don't Either know way. which gospel it's from, but I know that's in there somewhere. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, I'm a big fan. My favorite one is uh, Jesus and the Centurion. Mm, that's um, a good one. I, th- I know we've talked about it a few times, and I think I talked about it with Pastor Lincoln. But just like, I love the way we get to see Jesus amazed by something. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't know anywhere else in the Bible where... It says like, oh, and Jesus was amazed. Where it wasn't a bad thing. Like, right, right. Jesus was ala- amazed by their lack of faith. Right. Jesus was amazed like by the stupid things they did. That's a very indirect quote, but I'm sure that happened countless times. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was an opportunity where Jesus like saw this leader who had such incredible faith that Jesus was amazed. Like he was impressed. And I'm like, I don't remember reading that in other places in the Bible. And so it's super cool. And I'm like, all right, next time we got to hit that because I need to, I need to hear it. I need to hear a, what is that? An extrapolation <laughs> of that passage. It's a big word. It, it was. <laughs> I'm glad we're recording. I, so I never have to say it again um, from that. So the next series we're going into, we start this weekend as we're recording this. When you hear it, we're probably already through it. But nonetheless, we're going into the wisdom books. Mm-hmm. So give me a breakdown of the wisdom books. The wisdom books. So we're, we're starting a series called I Need Wisdom. And basically what it is is we're going to go through the five books, uh, five wisdom books, and we're going to hear just a little bit out of each of them. So the wisdom books would include... Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. So the one that we're going to actually be talking about this Sunday is going to be on Job. And um, what what an amazing story. What an amazing man, um, um, an incredibly faithful and trusting man. I mean, he was called, uh, God called him the most righteous person that was alive at the time. That The fact that God saw this man and he said he is a righteous man in a, in a sinful fallen world is just an amazing thing. Like Job would be an incredible person to know. And he went through some tough stuff. And one thing that we're going to talk about on Sunday morning is that every, everything was taken from Job uh, besides his life. Everything was taken from Job. And in the midst of that, he never once said to God that, he didn't believe he didn't trust he never complained about it he he trusted God to give him everything that he needed to live and to um take away everything that he didn't and um it's just it's just mind-blowing that somebody could be um in such a dark place in life and still love God um you know Job's family was taken away from him for no apparent reason. His uh, livelihood was taken away from him, his wealth. He he was, you know, he had sores on his body. He was sick. Um, His wife was encouraging him to uh, turn away from God. His friends were encouraging him to turn away from God. And and Job, he, he didn't do it. He was faithful. And that's such an amazing thing. And one of the application points that we're going to talk about is you know, hard things are going to happen in our life. Our life is, it's not always going to be easy. And our response can be one of two things. It can be either to curse God and say, you know, I, I, I've had enough. I can't, I can't do life with God anymore. Or we can say, God, you're in control and we trust you. And even in these hard things, we're going to love you and we're going to praise you. And, um, you know, w- when you're just saying it, it, it seems like such an obvious choice to be like, I, I will never, I will never curse God. But in the middle of that, the darkest time in your life, like that's such a hard thing to do. And, yeah. you know, you often question, you know, why does God do, um, allow bad things to happen to good people? And it's like, here's such an amazing example of somebody who, even though he did nothing to, um, d- deserve to, to go through these hardships, even though, you know, we, we deserve nothing. We, <laughs> He still trusted God on all of that. So it's pretty amazing uh, to see that. Yeah. I'm super excited for this series. I think, 
especially where we are like with COVID, like how many people were faced with that emotional like burden of whether they were dealing with depression, isolation, they felt like they couldn't come to church or they, they were scared just dealing with fear. Like that's a trial in and of itself that we're coming out of as a country, as a whole, as a nation, as, as a church, like we're seeing that like, who are the people that hung in there mm-hmm. that made that to what us, when we say it sounds so easy, mm-hmm. but when you're wrapped up, like you're saying, like in your mind, like it's so much harder. Yeah. It's, it's a much harder decision when it's in your mind and you don't just put it out there. And when, when all the, when all the cards are on the table, like how do you make sure you're always picking God? Like, so I'm excited to see what the way pastor Lincoln goes through the series and Sunday's going to be fan fantastic yeah well and i think sometimes it's it's easy to to get upset or frustrated with god when it's it's little things that go wrong because in the big things like everybody's watching us and it's it's a little bit easier to say hey this is a huge storm in my life i'm i can't handle it alone i need god but then in our in our day-to-day life we'll have so many little things that go wrong and we're just like we can't deal with it. We're, we're like, God, how, how dare you, you know, inconvenience me in my day-to-day life. And that, that is also not a good response to have. Um, uh, I know, uh, some of you guys might know that, uh, over the last couple of months, I've been, uh, doing kind of a fun passion project outside of work. And that's been creating this coffee cart that I've been taking to the farmer's market, which has been a blast. And at the beginning of starting that project, my prayer was just, God, you know, if this is not the path that I'm supposed to be on, would you, you know, put roadblocks up and just, you know, don't make it possible to move forward. Um, and, and yet also, you know, give me the strength to get through and the hurdles and, and creatively problem solve. But, but God, I want to be doing this according to your will. And if it's not your will, like it, it does not trump my relationship with you, like take it away from me. Sure. And so, uh, it's been an amazing process. It's been an amazing learning process. And along the way, like there have been things that I have had to problem solve. And, um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, before the first weekend that I was at the market, uh, an issue came up with a business license and I was like, okay, God, like I, I can't control this. I have done everything on my end that I I can to make this happen. I'm, I'm days away from being at the farmer's market for the first day. And, you have brought me this far. I know that you're not going to just leave me here Mm -hmm. and leave me out to dry. Like you're in control of the situation. And I, in that moment, it was like, I can either sit down and I can cry about it and I can be upset and I can say, God, why, how dare you, how dare you inconvenience me in this way? Or I, I can just give it to you and, and God, you're in control. And so after a few tears, you know, um, (laughs) You still did cry about it, but then, but then I was like, okay, God, I can't do anything. And I talked to the lady that runs the farmer's market and she was able to give me some grace that first day. And I didn't have to have all of my ducks in a row that first day to to be there. And what an amazing relief. And I was just like, in that moment, it's like, God, thank you so much because I had no control over that, but you made it happen and you continue to make it happen whatever whatever you throw at, at us um this this is something that needs to honor you and you're in control of it <laughs> yeah well to me that sounds you said that's a little thing but it's it's quite a big thing i in mean the in the grand of like, scheme like of things it's a pretty yeah. little thing but yeah but i feel like there'd be people that would that would take that and go like oh if i don't oh this must be god saying no like mm-hmm. i feel like that would be a really easy way to be like oh god's saying no i guess i quit yeah. But then, like, behind them is, like, a full coffee cart that they built, and there was a time put in by lots of people to, like, support that and a dream and a passion and all these things that have gone into it. But I feel like there's those moments where, like, if we're not careful, like, instead of looking at it as a hurdle, it's like, oh, God said no. So, okay, yeah. I guess I'm good. Like, well, and, it, yeah, it was, like, months down the road. It's like, okay, God, you're not going to get me this far <laughs> to say no, like days before it's going to start, there's money invested into this. There's people invested in this. Like I I can, I can still move forward. I can still, uh, yes, maybe this is like an immediate, like, no, like you're not going to move forward today. However, yeah, 
he's still in control and he, he can get you over that. I, I don't know. Yeah. You got to kind of like decide whether it's like a, a big no or a little no. <laughs> is this like a no that God's saying, stop, <laughs> don't move forward? Or is this a, is this an opportunity to excel? <laughs> Yeah, an opportunity to practice and patience an opportunity and trust. To trust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, has, yeah. talking about all this just one series, it's it's all about are you going to be faithful? Are you going to are you going to have faith that he's going to get you through this and Yeah. Well, in, in our culture like the slightest inconvenience, we're so quick to not fight the inconvenience, but to like change mm-hmm. path. Yeah. Like, oh, this one thing slightly didn't work. Okay. I need to change it instead of like, Oh, maybe I'm the problem. Like I need to work through this Mm -hmm. and I become better because of it. It's like, no, the process is wrong. Right. So it's like, I don't know. Well, and then you get into this like, woe is me headspace Mm -hmm. and that's not a good place to be either. That's also not trusting God. Exactly. I just want to wallow in self pity right now because nothing's going my way, but you haven't done anything to like move forward. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and how often are we victims of our own, like absolutely i'm so stuck in life well, what are you doing well nothing and it's like we're not doing anything so i mean yes you're stuck but like ultimately like move yeah like scientifically like one of the key things that like with people that really struggle with depression like the biggest thing they can do is just move physically mm-hmm. move because when you move, it triggers your brain to think about something else. And then if you're moving, like if you go like on a nice walk or you're, like you just power up a hill, like the endorphins are released and things start <laughs> happening. Or like even a medical condition that like mentally like makes you feel down, depression, puts you inside of yourself, like move, right. adjust. Like if you're struggling with a problem at work, I find this like with problem solving like that I even do here at church, like when we're we really have this big ambitious project we really want to do like our lighting. We want to, we want to redo the lighting. And then they were like, yeah, we went to these guys. They were awesome. They gave us a bid. It's $150,000. And I walk into the elders, here you go, fellas, make it happen. And they look at me like you are absolutely insane. And I'm going, Oh yeah. I left that meeting and it like the first, like, a little bit afterwards, there was like a little bit of resentment. Like, don't they know how big this problem is? And then I kind of walked away going like, well, this is just never going to get done. And then it was like, like a week or two later, I was like, well, I need to just adjust. Yeah. Like how often do we just need to like pivot ever so slightly? It wasn't slightly. a big no. It was a little no. It was a little no. <laughs> it was like, we're not doing that. <laughs> we understand the problem is still there. The yes is we need to f- solve this problem. And so, but the how we're solving it is the little no. Like, how do we keep adjusting that till we get the big yes? Like, how do we keep going that way? But, um, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) Those problems still aren't as big as the problems that Job was facing. Like, like he went through worse still. Yeah. (laughs) When I get to that point, (laughs) yikes. That's, I mean, and those are like those real tests, right? Like, like I can't complain because Job had it worse. (laughs) Yeah. But then how do we rationalize? Like if, but if you always say, this is a danger though. If you always say someone has it worse, when do you take the time, um, to, to like help yourself, to self-help, to like, to take that time with God to, um, like, Oh, somebody always has it worse than me. Well, yeah, but that doesn't give you the excuse to beat yourself into the dirt. Sure. So like, what is that balance point? Yeah. Well, the playing the comparison game is never, never a healthy thing. I think it's more of a mindset is, is Christ at the forefront of your mind is, you know, are the thing about Job is he was still praising God. Are you still praising God in this situation? Like, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a quote come into my head from Dr. Del Straub. Um, in, in one of his messages, he says, beware, don't compare. And from the first time he said that, that I remember it, I'll, all you'd hear in the church from everybody, you just start hearing it. Just these little whispers of like, in random conversations, like, oh man, I really like his truck. Beware. Don't, Don't compare. Go oh, her earrings are so great. Beware. Don't compare. It, <laughs> and like, like it was like really focused around like social media and how everything's a highlight reel. Mm-hmm. And we go, well, my life doesn't look like Maui. It doesn't look like traveling every day. And it's like, neither does their life. Like that, that ideal social media person that we're all thinking of when we think of that person. 
like their life doesn't look like that. Mm. Those are like they just have spaced out their one trip to Hawaii and post pictures like every month that make it look like they're in Hawaii all the time. <laughs> like, sure. but I don't know. That's the beware, don't compare. Yeah. Hmm. All right. What else do we have for this podcast? We covered the Just One series. We talked a little bit about coffee. Talked about Job. Spelled Job. Said Job. We're going into the wisdom books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we've covered most things. If you didn't hear the Just One series, you can find it on YouTube. Um, and the I Need Wisdom books, they're, they're, they're going to be coming out on YouTube. So... Basically, there's no excuses. If you haven't heard either of those series, go check it out on YouTube. You need to just make an adjustment (laughs) to our YouTube page and go watch them if you can't be with us in person. We'd love for you to join us in the building 9 and 11 on Finn Hill Road in Palsbo. Come check us out. And if not, join us online. And we'd love for you to join us in our community. Get connected. Be a part of what we're doing. 